Prehistoric giants called mastodons have left living clues of their existence that can be found right here in Detroit. There may be another connection to an extinct monster as close as your kitchen. To understand these connections, let's start where most things start, with a seed. Seeds are how plants reproduce. When a bird or mammal eats a fruit, the seeds will pass through the digestive tract and will eventually be deposited in a new location. The animal gets a snack and the plant gets transportation for its next generation. So, if seeds are meant to pass through digestive tracts, how do you explain this? An avocado seed. The avocado evolved with a giant sloth, a now extinct animal that once roamed the Americas. These oversized seeds had no problem passing through this 10 foot tall, 2,000 pound animal. The giant sloth got a delicious snack and the seeds were deposited in new locations. We no longer have the giant sloth, but we have the seeds and fruit that it shaped through its existence thousands of years ago. An artist's interpretation of a different giant mammal. This mastodon stands alongside a highway in Michigan. Living mastodons have been extinct for thousands of years, but they're not gone. They live on in our minds through art, science, and storytelling. We can even see evidence of their existence right here on Belle Isle in Detroit. This unfriendly looking tree is called the honey locust. Their seed pods have been found preserved in the guts of mastodons. Mastodons would eat the sweet pods and the seeds would pass through them unharmed. It's thought that the trees used the mastodons as a way to transport their seeds to new locations. If a mastodon became impatient and didn't want to wait for the seed pods to fall to the ground, it could easily push over and kill the tree. So if a tree is going to have an evolutionary partnership with a living bulldozer, it would need a way to defend itself. To learn how a tree would fight off a mastodon, I spoke with evolutionary biologist Rudyard Sadler. It's developed features such as the thorns on it that were uh, hypothesized to be something to protect the tree, protect its leaves, protect its foliage, protect its bark from large megafaunal mammals. And the, you know, some of the largest that walk the earth, especially in Michigan, are gonna be a lot of those mammoths and mastodons. It's a part of this hypothesized process that occurs evolutionarily, where you have an organism that is evolving to a positive selective pressure. Usually it's interacting with another species, another organism, and then one of them dies off, one of them goes extinct. And whatever those traits or features that were evolved uh, to coexist with that species, that persists in the living species, but we no longer see what was that partner in that evolutionary development. The spikes on the honey locust go up to 18 feet and then they stop and there's no more spikes beyond that. And that is what they think is about the maximum reach of a mastodon, which is about 18 feet. You're absolutely right, yeah. So it's, unfortunately we can't really do solid experimentation. I mean, that'd be ridiculous to try and go, you know, let's, let's resurrect a mammoth to test this hypothesis. But there are a lot of features in a lot of these different species that we can see that leads us to try and come up with the best hypothesized explanation for that feature. These outsized thorns evolved to fend off hungry mastodons. Connecting with ancient giant beasts is as easy as taking a walk in the park. And it's there every day. Uh, we just gotta pause, take a deep breath, and, and see it uh, through a new light to understand. You can reach back through time to long gone giants if you know what clues to look for in the wild where you are. I'm Coulter Stewart. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel, The Wild Where You Are, so you don't miss any of our new videos.